Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am Tierica Patterson, the founder of our new Female-Led Society. I'm the woman that's going to be initiating this transition from the society we have today to one that embraces and prefers the leadership of women. That is what a female-led society is. Why do we need a female-led society? Well, we need to do something, don't you think? Look around you. Is this peaceful? Is this pleasant? Is this beneficial? Is this honoring who we are as humans? Is our society today conducive to our success and progress? If the answer to those questions are no, then we need to do something. And I believe that women and feminine principles will be the answer that we need to achieve world peace. Why do I believe that women are superior to men? Of course not. But I do believe that the mothering, the natural mothering and nurturing nature will be much more beneficial to society than the masculine model of leadership, a.k.a. the patriarchy. We've tried it one way for so long. We've been under patriarchal rule for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's always been a tradition to prefer the man as a leader over the woman. So why don't we try something different and see what results we'll get? I think it's a fair thing to ask for or a fair thing to take. But regardless, today I want to talk about this article I saw in the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail brought up an interesting point today. Uh, Let's see, what do I still have the title of it? (laughs) The title of it is... Hidden torment of British men forced into arranged marriage. Hidden torment of British men forced into arranged marriage. Now, that's an interesting concept when you think about men being forced into arranged marriages and being tormented by it. Typically, the reports are that women are being forced into arranged marriage and they're victims. So women are often depicted as victims in arranged marriages. You don't ever think that the men are upset about it. But they are equally upset. In fact, I took a few notes doing this post, doing this article that I wanted to bring up. And let me read a little bit. While forced marriages are more commonly associated with vulnerable young women suffering at the hands of domineering male relatives, it is a significant problem in Britain for teenage boys, too. At 18, a young man by the name of Sue Hale was told he was going on holiday to visit relatives, and he believed it. But when he got there, he found a big wedding had been set up. He protested, but they were ignored. His, his uncle took his phones from him, and he was told that if he didn't obey, he would bring shame on the family. His mom was hysterical. when he was like, I don't want to do this. I was in shock. Both my sisters, his sisters even told him that I should do my duty as they had done. He said, I felt I was drowning and I had no voice and no rights. So they say there are many reasons for continued practice of forced marriage, including the desire by families to protect their property and to facilitate immigration. It's seen as protecting perceived culture and religious ideals and preventing unsuitable relationships with people outside their children's own cultures. But Britain has been coming increasingly liberal, liberal and the communities want to preserve their conservative ways. So what else? Um. Males are like princess princes in the home, usually because they're raised in a society or well, in a cultural belief that men are more important than women. So they're treated ideally like they can do no wrong, that prince. But then when they're told you need to marry, they go into shock and anger because they don't have tools to cope with being told what to do when they, all their lives they've been raised to think that they're a king and they're in charge of everything and what they need goes. So this, it says that although young women are more commonly at risk, they are more rebellious than men who are faced with the prospect of a forced marriage. And it says the explanation is no less troubling. As girls, they have often spent their entire lives being treated as inferior to and less valuable than their brothers. So they used to being told what to do and bossed around and treated as though they are property. But men have this deep seated anger within them as a result of forced marriage because they aren't treated like they're less than and somebody needs to tell them to do. And all of a sudden they have to fulfill this duty perpetuated by who? Their mothers. Their mothers are the ones who are 
blackmailing them, emotionally abusing them and telling them that they have to, or they're going to bring shame on the family. Men feel as though if they disappoint their mother, their mother will die. There's even one example in this article where a mom took 15 painkillers to try to tell her son, if you don't do this, I'm going to kill myself. So wait, (laughs) what's interesting here is that it's the mothers who are reinforcing this patriarchal rule. The women are so much revered by their sons. Their sons feel, and they said it's a, um, what is this? There's a prophet in their religion who quoted heaven lies beneath the feet of mothers. So they are telling men to respect their mothers and to honor what their mothers say. However, the mothers are enforcing a patriarchal rule by forcing their sons to marry people that they don't like and forcing their daughters to be to feel inferior to women. So the reason I wanted to bring this up, because after reading this, I felt sad for the men because I had never thought about that. They would not want to be married to somebody they didn't they didn't know. I knew the whole concept was ridiculous anyway, because why is marriage being seen as like a, a trade, a trade like commerce. These are human beings. How are you going to put this one with this one and this one to this one? Why as parents are we seeking to control our children's lives this much? We, can we not trust ourselves to raise proper children to make good choices for themselves? Like that's my whole point as a mom. I want to make sure that my sons will go out there and make wise choices and be able to support themselves. And if they're able to do that independently, then that means I did a good job. So why would I sit there and try to arrange everything in their life to meet my specifications when I'm a completely different person than these, than these children, they're their own people. But what I found to be upsetting was that these young ladies who grow up in a household where they're taught that they're inferior to their brothers and to their father and to men in general, they grow up to become these mothers who treat their daughters the same way. Yes, these mothers who are forcing their daughters into marriages were brainwashed that this is the right way and the true way. And even though they were upset about it and even though they cried and even though it was not beneficial to them and hurt and they see how hurt they were by it, they still treat their daughters the same. Men are being hurt by forced marriages and arranged marriages that their mothers are emotionally abusing them into, into completing. But the women, the mothers were once abused and once forced into doing these things too. And they just perpetuate the cycle, which is indicative of how abuse impacts generations upon generations upon generations. Every abuser out there has been abused themselves. Otherwise they would not even understand the behavior. So we've been living in a patriarchal society for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Maybe since the beginning of time, it's been taught and ingrained in us. Men must lead. Men must pave the way. Men must be in charge. Men must take over, have dominion. And many men don't even want any of that. So we got the violent resurgence of misogyny across the board. You see these men forming these groups (laughs) that are just here to say, I am a man and just... To cause terror. Because they're trying to hold themselves up to an idea of masculinity when they don't really want to be that way inside. I truly believe most men want to be servants of women. Most men want to be supporters, want to just sit there in the bosom of a woman and be loved on and kissed on and told that they're great. And and, and just men want to be loved by women, not to dominate women. But we can't allow men to be soft and nurturing and supportive and and caring because those aren't traits of strength. But why aren't those traits of strength? Because of patriarchal society, which teaches us that traits associated with being nurturing and supportive are equated to being weak. And who's nurturing supportive and supportive typically? The female. So any trace associated with being feminine is 
considered to be a weakness. So any man who wants to be supportive and nurturing and loving and kind, he's considered to be a weak man. Being emotional is weak for some reason. Even though we all have emotions and we all feel them, yet this man in this story, instead of crying because he's so hurt by what's happening in his life and being forced to marry someone he doesn't even love, instead of crying, he cuts himself. He cuts himself and has to wear long sleeves so nobody can see the scars, but he can't cry because he's a man. And guess who's facilitating his abuse? His mother. And guess why she's facilitating his abuse? Because she was abused. I had to take a hard look at myself and my past and my dealings with abuse. And I can still see that part of me trying to rise up myself. So with my two sons, I have two sons, 16 and 18 years old. And at times I'm not saying I'm beating them because there's no way I can beat my sons. They're bigger than me. They would laugh like, come on, mom. But at times I feel that anger from my past abuse rising up in me and I try not to relay it onto them in conversations with them. Sometimes I can be aggressive. Sometimes I can imitate the abusers that were in my life when communicating with my sons. And I have to stop myself and say, hey, you're not going to pass this on to them because then they're going to pass it on to others. What I don't teach my sons is that women are inferior to them. What I don't teach my sons is that they can't show emotion. I tell them don't be on social media, putting their emotions on social media. They need to talk to the person they feel about, talk to the person they're having the feelings about directly. But it's okay to show emotions. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to feel how you want to feel. I truly believe that our female led society is going to be the remedy for so many of our social ills because in our female led society, guess what? People can be who they want to be, feel how they want to feel. Even though it's going to be a female led society, it is being, being, what's the word? Um, led by feminine principles, not feminine genitals, feminine principles. Okay. And a, and, and a woman is typically more nurturing and loving and accepting of the people around her. A good woman, anyway. A good woman, when she has a child and the child display, um, displays their personality, the, a good woman who's not being abusive, who hasn't been abused in the past, will say, you know what? That's who my son is. That's who my daughter is. I let you be who you are. And that's what we need more of in this world. We need more acceptance of natural human tendencies. There is nothing wrong with being homosexual. There is nothing wrong with being transgender. There's nothing wrong with a man who wants to exhibit feminine traits. There's nothing wrong with a woman who wants to um, participate in masculine uh, ideas and, and activities. Just be your natural expression of who you are and be great. Be great at it. As long as you're not doing anything to harm yourself or anyone else, there's nobody who should be able to tell you what you can and cannot do and what you should do. And especially not being held to the idea of masculine, the masculine model of leadership, because most people don't want to be leaders. So if most people can't be leaders, number one, and most people don't want to be leaders. Now you have all these men standing in a row being told you must be the leader. You must take charge. You must take the men. You must over like, really? They don't want to do that. They don't, they're not capable of doing it. They don't want to do it. And then they're lashing out violently because they're upset. They don't want to do that. You can't place your expectations for, for how someone should behave. Allow them. You can raise them to be conscientious leaders, but you can't place the expectation of a, of a man to be a leader and don't tell him how to lead properly. You showing him leadership means overtake, overpower, dominate. That's not leadership. That's abuse. But who is perpetuating this masculine model of leadership? We can blame men all we want to. Oh, men are awesome. We can say men are terrible. They're, look what they're doing. But guess what? Women are allowing it. And women are reinforcing it by teaching their children the same things. And allowing their daughters to accept the mess. So yes, 
Women are to blame for a lot of our social ills as well. Although we are held held back from certain opportunities, we still have the responsibility to make a change. And I want to make this change. I want to start with this this change today. And I want you to stand with me. I want you to sit there right now and decide that I don't want to be a perpetuator of the masculine model of leadership any longer. I'm not going to participate in the patriarchy. I'm not going to teach my daughters that they are inferior. I'm not going to teach my daughters that they need to find a man to lead them. I'm not going to teach my sons to over overtake women. And I'm not going to accept those things in my life either. It's fine if you feel that you're not a leadership leader type person and you know you're a follower. That's fine. Find a leader that you can trust. That's it. Because most people are not leaders. Most people are followers. But don't follow somebody just because they have the gender that is mandated by society. Follow somebody because you trust where they're going and you want to go with them. And let's not let's let's stop the cycle of abuse on our children. Let's stop trying to control them and use them as pawns in our little vision for what our world should be like. We raise our children to make great decisions, to put awesome energy into the world and we let the chips fall where they may. We offer correction, but we got to trust ourselves and our ability as parents and trust our children that they were listening, but we can't control them or we're abusing them. Control is abuse. Control is abuse. Let people live how they want to live. In our female led society, you can do whatever you want to do as long as you're not hurting anyone or yourself. Other than that, you choose your career. You choose where you want to live. You choose how you express yourself. I don't care if you're a man and you want to wear a bra every day. Wear a bra every day. Nobody going to bat an eye. That's how you feel sexy. Feel sexy. If you're a woman and you feel as though you love other women, hey, it's a lot of other women who love women too. Y'all have fun. Enjoy yourself. Trust yourselves. But let's hold back on trying to control and manipulate and hold our children to standards that were set by men who are insecure and they aren't even alive anymore. We passing along traditions from hundreds of years ago. Who knows what their, their motives were when they created these traditions? And we can be followers, but come on, let's follow somebody that's smart. Let's not follow traditions that are harmful to our children. How can we be women and teaching our daughters and treating our daughters as though they are inferior? And we're women. We know how painful it felt to be treated that way. And we do it again. At some point, we got to stop and say, no, no, no. This is not happening anymore. And I think today's the day. So mothers, women, young ladies, let's take back the reins. And stop supporting patriarchal ideas by trying to control our children and manipulate them in a way that's abusive to them. You're listening to the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am T. Erica Patterson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to visit femaleledsociety.org. Write me a letter. Say hi on social media. I definitely will respond. All right, guys. I'll talk to you soon. 